In this video, we will continue practicing inverse trig functions, like inverse tangent and arc tangent. Well, actually, inverse tangent and arc tangent mean the same thing. We'll get back to that in a second. Please remember that inverse trig functions have restrictions on the range. Inverse sine or arc sine is only defined for the right side of the unit circle from negative pi over 2 to positive pi over 2. Inverse cosine is only defined for the top half of the circle from 0 to pi. And inverse tangent or arc tangent is only defined for the right side of the circle from negative pi over 2 to positive pi over 2. And uh, we cannot include the endpoints because tangent is undefined um, at these endpoints. Think about it. Right here at uh, pi over 2, tangent would be y over x. That's 1 over 0. You can't divide by 0. That's undefined. That's why these are open circles. Now, an inverse trig function, also known as arc trig functions, is just an angle. This is the angle whose tangent is negative radical 3 over 3. All through this video, I am going to assume that you have memorized the special values that are on this chart. Okay? Make sure that that is true. Make sure you know every single one of these values by heart. So, when I look at this and I ask myself, wait a minute, the tangent of what angle is negative radical 3 over 3? I'm thinking of my chart. Ignore the negative sign for a minute. Um, the tangent of pi over 6 is radical 3 over 3, which is the same as 1 over radical 3. All right? Pi, pi over 6. Now, that doesn't mean that pi over 6 is the answer because this is negative. So that can change things a little bit. However, that tells me the reference angle. All right? That means that the reference angle is definitely pi over 6. All right, here's a unit circle with the pi over 6's marked. Um, reference angle of pi over 6. Here are the four angles that have a reference angle of pi over 6. Tangent is positive in the first and in the third quadrant. Tangent is negative in the second and in the fourth quadrant. Now, um, but uh, on the other hand, restrictions. Inverse tangent is only defined uh, on the right-hand side of the unit circle. So that means I can forget about these ones on the left. All right, They're, they're not in the restricted uh, part of the range. So these are the only two angles I really have to choose from. If I want the tangent to be negative, then I need to pick this one in the fourth quadrant. And this one is negative pi over 6. Uh, notice I cannot call it 11 pi over 6 because that takes me outside of the restricted zone. I have to go this way and call it negative pi over 6. Now don't think that you can just take the reference angle and make it negative. That worked this time but that does not always work. Alright, I'm gonna go faster and faster as I go along. Now I'm looking at arc tangent. Arc tangent is just an angle. It's the angle whose tangent is negative radical 3. Well, forget the negative for a second. What angle has a tangent of just radical 3? Now, looking back at the values we have memorized, um, the tangent of pi over 3 is radical 3. That tells me the reference angle. Okay, The reference angle then must be pi over 3. Okay, um, let's look at some angles. All right, here's a unit circle with a bunch of pi over threes on it. Uh, looking at this unit circle that um, is divided up into pi over threes, these are the four angles that have a reference angle of pi over three. Again, tangent is positive here and here tangent is negative here and here. But once again, tangent is only defined on the right-hand side of the circle. 
So that means I can forget about these two over here. I'm choosing between these. Um, because I want the negative version, that means this one down here. Like boom. That is going to be called negative pi over 3. I already knew the reference angle is pi over 3. But this is negative pi over 3 in this direction. Okay, it worked out again that I just took the reference angle and I made it negative. But again, that does not always work. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. It pays to just look at the unit circle and see what's happening. Okay, let's look at number three. Arc sine of one half is just an angle. It's the angle whose sine is one half. All right, we have memorized that that is pi over six. It's plain and simple. All right, we memorized that the sine of pi over six is one half. So that's the answer. That, that one's plain and simple. Look at number four. Inverse cosine is just an angle. It's the angle whose cosine is zero. All right, that is going to be a quadrantal angle. What angles have a cosine of zero? Remembering that cosine is the x value on the unit circle. Where are the x values zero? Here and here. These are the two places that have an x value of zero on the y-axis. However, cosine is only defined, well, I'm sorry, inverse cosine is only defined in the top half of the circle. Or we, we've got those restrictions. So we can forget about this one. So this is the only answer, and that is pi over 2. So the answer number 4 is pi over 2. All right, number 5. Arc tangent uh, of radical 3 over 3 is just an angle. It's the angle whose tangent is radical 3 over 3. Uh, by the way, this is the same as 1 over radical 3. So what angle has a tangent of 1 over radical 3? Um, this is one that we memorized. It is pi over 6. All right, that's one of the ones I told you to memorize. The tangent of pi over 6 is 1 over radical 3, or radical 3 over 3. All right, that's it. Nothing fancy on this one. That's just plain the answer. Uh, inverse sine. Inverse sine is just an angle. I'm looking for the angle whose sine is negative radical 2 over 2. Now please keep in mind that radical 2 over 2 is the same thing as 1 over radical 2. Now with this negative sign I have to be careful. So I need to talk in terms of the reference angle first. Uh, because that's what we really are, have memorized. The sign of what angle is 1 over radical 2? We've memorized that that is pi over 4. The sine of pi over 4 is positive 1 over radical 2. But what about the negative? If I want to deal with the negative, I really need to look at the unit circle if I want to be sure. Okay, so let's do that. Looking at this unit circle, uh, these are the four angles that have a reference angle of pi over 4. All of these are going to give me uh, an answer of 1 over radical 2. Um, but, uh, however, these two will be positive 1 over radical 2, and these two will be negative 1 over radical 2. Because the sine function is the y value on the unit circle, and the y's are positive up here <coughs> and negative down here. However, range restrictions. Inverse sine can only be on the right hand side of the circle. So for that reason, I can forget about these two. So uh, I'm limited to, to these two. If I want a negative uh, radical 2 over 2, I can forget about that one. So this is the one I want. So once again, it did work out to be simply a negative pi over 4. All right, It was that reference angle with a negative. It won't always just be the reference angle with a negative. You really need to look at the unit circle. I'm, I'm hoping one pops up that's not just the negative reference angle. All right, stay tuned. 
Um, in the meantime, number seven. Arc cosine is just an angle. It's the angle whose cosine is negative one half. Well, forget the negative for a second. The cosine of what angle is positive one half? Um, well, that's going to be pi over three. But that's just the reference angle, though. That tells me that the reference angle is pi over three. Okay, because I memorized that the cosine of pi over three is positive one half. But I want negative one half. So um, let's look at a unit circle with a bunch of pi over threes on it. Where did I put my pi over threes? So all four of these angles have a reference angle of pi over three. They will all give me one half when I take the cosine of it, except um, these two will be positive and these two will be negative because cosine is an x value on the unit circle and x is positive on the right, negative on the left. However, uh, inverse cosine has a restricted range. It can only be in the top half of the circle. So therefore, I can forget about the bottom half. So these are my only two options. If I want the negative version, then I have to forget about this one. Aha! I've been waiting for this to happen. This is finally one that's not going to just be negative of the reference angle. All right, the reference angle is pi over three, but this angle is two pi over three, not negative pi over three. Okay, that's gonna be the answer for number seven. Notice that negative pi over three would be down here. This is where negative pi over three is. That cannot be the answer uh, because cosine, uh, well, inverse cosine is undefined down here. All right, range restrictions. So boom, there you go, I was waiting for that to happen. All right, number eight. Arc cosine is just an angle. It's the angle whose cosine is negative radical three over two. Well, forget about the negative for a second. The cosine of what angle is radical three over two? All right, hopefully you have memorized that that is pi over six. Okay, the cosine of pi over six is radical three over two. All right, you're supposed to memorize that. Now, because of the negative, this is not the answer. All right, the cosine of pi over six is positive radical three over two. This is just the reference angle. Okay, let's look at uh, the unit circle. Since the reference angle is pi over six, all right, and these are all pi over sixes, these are the four angles that have a reference angle of pi over six. All of these are gonna give me some kind of radical three over two. Um, however, cosine is the x coordinate on the unit circle. Um, x's are positive over here and negative over there. Okay, now, arc cosine is only defined for the top half of the unit circle. So I can forget about these ones down here in the bottom. If I want a negative cosine, uh, then I want this one. I don't want this one. All right, so what is this called? Well, this is one, two, three, four, five, five pi over six. All right, once again, note, it is not simply negative pi over six. All right, when it's negative, I can't just take the reference angle and make it negative. It is five pi over six. Negative pi over six is down here, and uh, the inverse cosine isn't even defined over there. Look at number nine. Inverse sine is just an angle. It's the angle whose sine is negative one. Well, remembering that sine is a y value on the unit circle, where's the y value going to be negative one? Um, the y value is gonna be negative one down here, and uh, this is gonna be called negative pi over two. So negative pi over two, 
is the answer. Can't call it 3 pi over 2. That would take me around into the undefined zone over here. Can't go that way. Have to go this way the entire time I stay in the defined range. Uh, number 10. Inverse tangent is just an angle. It's the angle whose tangent is negative 1. So what angle has a tangent of negative 1? Well, let's think about uh, what about a tangent of positive 1. What angle has a tangent of positive 1? That's one of the things we memorize. Tangent of pi over 4 is positive 1. So I think we've just discovered the reference angle. So that tells me that the reference angle is pi over 4. Okay, so I need, uh, I need pi over 4. These are the four angles that have a reference angle of pi over 4. Now tangent is positive in the first and third quadrant and it is negative in the second and fourth quadrant. Keep in mind please that inverse tangent is only defined on the right hand side of the circle because of uh, range restrictions. So um, if we can only be on the right hand side of the circle we can forget about these two. Furthermore we want the angle whose tangent is negative one not positive one so we can forget about that one. So that means this is going to be the answer right here and we are going to call this negative pi over 4. The reference angle is pi over 4. This is negative pi over 4. Okay. Number 11. Alright, here we have a trig function inside of a trig function. I recommend that you evaluate the inner function and then evaluate the outer function using the answer that you got from step one. Inverse cosine is just an angle. It's the angle whose cosine is one half. So the cosine of what angle is one half? Well, I'm hoping that at this point you have memorized that that is pi over three. Right, the cosine of pi over three is one half. So that means that we have the tangent of pi over 3. Now what's the tangent of pi over 3? Um, that should just be radical 3. Right, tangent of pi over 3 is radical 3. That's one of the values that we are supposed to memorize. Okay, so, um, so that's it. The final answer is radical 3. Number 12. Uh, let's evaluate the inner function. What is the sine of 5 pi over 2? That's a quadrantal angle. So this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. This is 5 pi over 2. This is, uh, this point has the coordinates 0, comma, 1. And the sine is uh, simply the y value. So that means this, all of this right here, has a value of 1. So that means I have uh, the inverse tangent of 1. So now I'm going to evaluate this. Inverse tangent is just an angle. It's the angle whose tangent is 1. So what angle has a tangent of 1? Uh, well, hopefully you memorize that. That's pi over 4. Okay, remember guys, remember tangent of pi over 4 is 1. Boom, memorized it. So that's number 12. Man, how many more of these problems are there? Maybe I should make another video. Okay, uh, yep, I'm going to have to stop this video here. That's the end of page 1. That's going to be a good place to stop. I'm going to make another video for page 2. So... I will see you on the next video for number 13 through 20. Oh, God.